widespread role discrepancies as lay votes. Medang voters demand answers to no names on roll. And new NCD election manager reassures voters. This is National MTV News with Mirba Tulo. A very good evening. Thank you for joining us for Thursday's news. In Morbe province at Nawai Block in Leh, polling was disrupted this morning by a community leader over the number of ballot papers issued to the ward this year. After a round of angry exchanges, polling was suspended whilst presiding officers sought advice from the assistant returning officers whether or not to continue with the process in this area. Lucy Kopana has more. The Nawai Block polling station was already filled with eager voters by 9 a.m. this morning. They had already formed long lines and were waiting for the polls to open as presiding officers sorted out scrutineers. The commotion began when an angry community leader started shouting, complaining about the number of ballot papers issued this year. Ballot papers are coming to the Nawai Block, so come out them 3,500. No 1,500 are coming at this bit of fear. Spokesperson Nimi Dua. Presiding officer calmed the crowd down, explaining that advice would have to be given by the assistant returning officer to deal with the situation. Polls were suspended at 9.30 a.m. Lucy Kopana, National MTV News, Lay. Electoral Commissioner Patilius Gamato arrived in Leh this morning and went straight to the Ward 2 Council office to cast his vote. Gamato is registered as a Leh voter. Despite the problems with the electoral roll, he was able to find his name on the 2017 electoral roll. He spoke after polling. Like every other person, every other citizen in Papua New Guinea, uh, during this time, uh, when the nation is, uh, is polling, uh, I'm happy to come and poll here. Uh, I used to live here. Uh, my name is Ian Lei. I uh, often uh, go back and forth to Lei. Some troublesome polling scenes also played out in Tent City in Lei. Hundreds of voters who turned up found that their names were not on the electoral rolls. Polling officials were forced to discard the electoral rolls and allow voters to vote without confirming their names. An MTV camera crew member who witnessed the voting said scrutineers were identifying residents and polling officers allowed voting to proceed. Large numbers of voters were frustrated by the flawed electoral roll. The Kokopo police station has come under lockdown as early as 6 p.m. since the beginning of polling last Saturday. Scrutineers have been camping outside the police station all throughout this week, keeping watch over the ballot boxes. The Kokopo police station has been catering to ballot boxes coming from polling sites in the Kokopo district. East New Britain Police Provincial Commander Joseph Tabali says the situation is expected to continue until counting starts. Meanwhile, polling in most parts of Kokopo, Prabaul and Gazil districts is expected to be completed by this weekend, while polling in Pomio district will continue until mid-next week. Meanwhile, one woman and a man from Yalibupangia in the Southern Highlands and one man from East New Britain have been arrested for impersonating during polling in East New Britain this week. East New Britain Provincial Police Commander, Senior Inspector Joseph Tabali, says the trio were using names of deceased people and former residents of their ward to cast their votes. PPC Tabali says other voters alerted security personnel at the polling venue and they were arrested and locked up at the Kokopo police cell. The incident happened in Kokopo and Gazelle districts respectively. Tabali says people who breach election laws will not be taken lightly. To Medang, eligible voters in Medang province are demanding answers why the names were not included in the electoral update. A number of voters told MTV they had voted in the 2012 elections, but for this year they cannot vote because their names were missing. In Al Malmi LLG of Bogia district, the polling was supposed to be completed on Tuesday. But the presiding officer was forced to extend the polling to Wednesday. Eligible voters in Al Malmi were not able to cast their votes as their names aren't on the electoral roll update. Community leaders and scrutineers are not happy with the arrangement and polling officials had to extend the polling by another day. 
a lot of uh, discrepancies, uh, especially um, um, uh, people, their names are not on the word register room. And uh, the community leaders and school communities, they were not pleased with the uh, the arrangements so. Voters in the Sumkar district also raised similar concerns. The name the Minister of Common Roads, so. I have to say that 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 Election manager Peter Yasaro confirmed eligible voters in Medang province will miss out on this year's election simply because their names aren't on the electoral roll update. Roll update was done um, through planting name online been vote 2012 and you know more come up again or this uh, updated one. And more so I couldn't explain that because it, it was done through data processing center. Uh, we all DPOs want them IT line or remake him, so I couldn't explain that. But yes, um, there was decreasing, decreasing number of eligible voters in some electorates for the last um, 2012 election. Uh, now this election now 2017. But polling in Medang started on Monday. Polling was supposed to start on Saturday. However, due to the late arrival of election materials, it was deferred. So far, polling in the six districts commenced without any major disturbance. <coughs> However, a number of the polling stations in the province conducted polling without any security personnel on the ground due to financial constraints. In regard to um, Policy as courts, yes, um, we had problem in getting uh, police security to go with our polling teams because um, while we were dispatching our teams, na, AROs to respective allergies and polling teams, um, allowances from all police or in the so they were hesitant to go with our teams. It's like creating problems. So, Back at the energy centers, long go out again, all polling places, and all, all polling teams too, or hesitate logo. But I went to individual assistant retaining officers and the retaining officers. I directed them to just disperse the teams. An investigative task force team is conducting security checks in all the polling areas where there is no police presence. This is to make sure polling areas are free and safe for voters. Mata Luis, National MTV News, Medang. You're watching National MTV News. After the break, some more election updates from across the country. Stay tuned. Welcome back to National MTV News. Polling in the Koyari LLG in the Cairo Kohiri district in Central Province is progressing well. Today, the community at Rona Works in the Sogeri Valley went to the polls without any incident. Presiding officer Copeland Tapio is confident of finishing polling successfully and without any delays. MTV was at Rona Works at about 10.30 this morning where polling team two had set up for the day. Locals started casting their votes at 10.50 a.m. Presiding officer for Team 2, Koyari LLG, Copeland Tapio, said polling began on Tuesday and has been progressing well. Uh, we started on Tuesday at depot, Wednesday at the Rona 2, and Thursday here. So now we completed the depot ward. Uh, generally, the election uh, in Koyari area has been uh, smoothly uh, uh, going and there uh, are no any problems. People, especially the voters, they behaved uh, well. However, a local, Arako Berewi, was concerned that the two ballot boxes already contained marked ballot papers from the previous polling station. All box, all in been open, uh, vote finished in a paper, it's been inside of vote all working in Lorona to the depot. All carry move by come here. Now what they told us was that uh, it was normal for them to do that. They bring over the uh, votes that they have voted as in the box out there. Normally before, when we have elections, we usually see an empty box. The 
uh, officers out there, they usually show us that the box is empty and there are no papers in there. But then this recent one year, they have already got the papers in there that they've cast the vote. So I'm questioning whether this is the right process that we are doing now. Mr. Tapio said the ballot boxes were being used again because polling was still within the same ward. Yes, ballot boxes, we use the same ballot boxes. Kairuku Hiri has 27 candidates vying for the open seat. Only one is a woman. 13 of the candidates are independents and 14 of them are endorsed by political parties. Next week, the election polling team will move from the depot ward to 17 Mile. Deli Waigeno, National, MTV News. After four days of delay, polling in Malalawa Station, Gulf Province, commenced with a smooth start today. Taure Lakekamu Assistant Returning Officer Morgan Meafaramu said election materials only arrived in Malalawa at 2 p.m. yesterday. Polling in Gulf Province is behind schedule. According to the Gazette date, polling was supposed to have started on Saturday, 24 June. Gulf election manager Povare Tore explains that the delay is because of limited funding released to the province from the Electoral Commission in Port Mosby. Our ballot papers arrived a little bit late, so we try to organize ourselves before we get things out, out, of, the, out of here. But uh, progress is, it's, we are going all right. We are within a, a, a given time period, so we are planning to finish our program within the, you know, 14-day uh, period. For Malalawa Station, polling was supposed to have started on Monday, 26 June, but there was no election materials to conduct polling. Yesterday, when MTV News visited the proposed polling venue, voters were waiting to cast the votes. Taure Lakekamu Assistant Returning Officer Morgan Miafaramu said election materials for other areas in Malalawa will be airlifted out today. 24th of June, but however, uh, we've been delayed, so for our schedule, uh, we are looking at about maybe another eight days or ten days. But Malalawa is not the only area in Gulf where polling has been deferred. Kikori Open candidate Alex Harrow was also frustrated that polling in his electorate did not start on time. Boxes and papers and, and without police escorts and all that, uh, this should be questioned. A lot of rumors are coming on uh, media and, and all sorts of uh, things. And if this is sufficient, it must be true. Even on uh, everybody's uh, floating all these rumors around. So as a candidate, I see that this election might not prove to be correct and uh, in the true opinion of choosing the right leaders of this nation and this province. Merlin Diaukatam, National MTV News. Newly appointed NCD election manager Alwyn Jimmy says polling for the nation's capital will be conducted tomorrow. Disputed ballot boxes were taken to the Rita Flynn netball courts to be audited and properly destroyed. Presiding officers and scrutineers were called to the courts to witness the handing of ballot boxes. The Electoral Commission addressed the public today regarding disputed ballot boxes. New NCD Electoral Manager Alvin Jimmy says the ballot papers will be either destroyed or kept at a secured location during pollings tomorrow. The Commission has done this in the presence of presiding officers. Get all the presiding officers and we must make sure that these presiding officers, when we give them the ballot papers, they have to sign a stake deck. If I give, if I give, say for example, if I give 500 ballot papers to a, to a presiding officer, he has to declare that I've been given 500 ballot papers. When he comes back, we have to have him organize himself, get all the reports, whatever, and then after that, he has to declare how many papers have been used and how many papers have been unused. It comes after the ballot boxes were disputed coming out from Nine Mile. Behind me, electoral offices and police are destroying the disputed ballot papers that came from a settlement in Nine Mile. The ballot papers were kept at the electoral office in Boroko, and now it has been brought out here to the Rita Flynn courts. Mr. Jimmy has assured NCD residents that the pollings will happen tomorrow 
and it will be successful. He has told members of the public, police and presiding officers today during the auditing of the disputed ballot boxes. Well, all these papers, we are trying to uh, reconcile them. And then uh, whatever papers that have been used on Tuesday, we will ignore them. We will give, we'll give them the new papers. There was a healthy crowd of about 500 people witnessing the events unfold. There is a more informed voting population that is interested to see the outcome. People are eager to vote tomorrow. Bethany Harriman, National MTV News. And now for the latest from this development, we join Adelaide Sirox Curry. We are currently here at the Rita Flynn Network Court where preparations for entity polling is underway. Here are the polling officers and presiding officers who will be signing state deck that um, ensures that they are accountable for the uh, number of ballot papers that go out and will be coming back. Also here are candidates and scrutineers who are here to witness the whole preparation, but they are also here to witness the auditing of ballot papers that were used on Tuesday. Polling will go ahead tomorrow, as the NCD election manager, Alwin Jimmy, has said. He is confident that it will go to on tomorrow and it will be as smooth as possible. Thank you, Adelaide. Now to a look at the finance news. The Kina closed unchanged at 0.3145 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0.307 US dollars, 0.3992 Australian dollars, 0.2667 Euro and 34.17 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold, cocoa and copper closed higher, while coffee closed the day lower. Palm oil, crude oil and copper all closed the day higher. And on the stock markets, the Dow Jones closed 143 points higher, the ASX closed 52 points higher, and the All Ordinaries closed 50 points higher. Here with National MTV News, stories making headlines overseas when we come back. Stay tuned. Welcome back to National MTV News. Turning overseas now, six people have been charged over the 1989 Hillsborough that killed 96 Liverpool football fans in Northern England. The deaths were initially ruled as accidental, but new inquests last year found the fans have been unlawfully killed. They've had inquiries, investigations and inquests, but the Hillsborough families have never had public prosecutions. They fought for nearly 30 years for this moment. Uh, I'm absolutely delighted. We've got today everything we could have asked for. In 1989, the police officer in charge at Hillsborough was David Duckenfield. He will now face prosecution. There is sufficient evidence to charge former Chief Superintendent David Duckenfield with the manslaughter by gross negligence of 95 men, women and children. The match commander ordered the opening of an exit gate through which the fans poured onto overcrowded terraces. He's charged with the manslaughter of all but one of the victims. Tony Bland died four years later, too late to be included in the charges. Andrew Brooks is one of those killed at Hillsborough. He was 26. His sister Louise has long campaigned for justice. It's another event where my parents haven't been alive to, to see it or to hear it. And it's not just my parents, it's other Hillsborough families who have um, gone to their graves, never seen today. The youngest to die at Hillsborough was just 10 years old, the oldest a pensioner. They were all unlawfully killed. They've long been calls for justice. Now, nearly 30 years after they died, those said to be responsible will face trial and the prospect of jail. A police officer repeatedly stabbed during the terror attack on London Bridge early this morning has spoken out about his experience for the first time. Wayne Mackies was one of the first officers on the scene as the attack unfolded. It was just after 10 on the 3rd of June when three men started their attack on London Bridge. PC Wayne Marks of the British Transport Police had just come on shift and walked out into a scene of chaos. Oh, so I'm about to get my radio and I hear this scream, a woman scream. So 
sort of behind me, but from the right hand side. And when I look, I see a woman, young, young white lady, and she's been attacked. Then, he told me, before he'd collected his thoughts, he saw a man knocked to the ground, a knife man standing behind him. I take my baton with my right hand, I rack it, full extension. I take a deep breath and I charge in. I try to take the first one out in one go. I swing as hard as I can, everything behind it. I'm aiming straight for his head. Then while I'm fighting the first one, I get a massive whack to the side, right side of my head. Um, felt metal, thought maybe it was a, a metal pole or bar at first. Afterwards, I realised it was a knife. PC Marks was temporarily blinded in one eye. The first attacker was still on the floor, but soon the second attacker was joined by a third. He fought all three men off before collapsing and being taken to hospital but he'd bought crucial time, allowing people to escape, reducing the time the attackers had before they were shot by armed officers. Scientists have come up with a pain-free way of administering the flu jab, and it's no more painful than a Band-Aid. Like a Band-Aid, but this patch could revolutionise the way we receive the flu vaccine. This work is really important. It's, it's changing the game. We've got a completely new way that's much uh, easier, cheaper, potentially, and safer. The first randomised trial of the microneedle patch has been conducted in the United States involving 100 people. Some were given a jab, in others the patch was applied for 20 minutes on the wrist. Under a microscope, tiny needles can be seen. They puncture painlessly into the skin and dissolve. In those microneedles is the flu vaccine. I get the flu vaccine every year, so anything to eliminate needles would be fantastic. Fantastic. While this patch is at least three years away from being on the market, experts say this technology could be used for other immunisations, especially when dealing with children. But general practitioners hope the self-administered patch doesn't reduce important health checks. For most GPs, the value is the patient turning up, so that gives them the opportunity to ask about other health issues that they might have, to ask questions about medication compliance. In Queensland, researchers are developing a rival product. The nano patch is applied to the skin for around a minute. Clinical testing is currently underway. Well, the patch is much less intimidating. It's really exciting. It's dealing with the immunological sweet spot in the skin where there are immune cells that can respond really well. I'm very excited by this work. Back home and Lay began polling this morning with widespread reports of role discrepancies and angry voters. At Omili Primary School, voting was suspended for over an hour after police fired shots to disperse a crowd of rowdy voters. At Unitech, students burnt ballot papers claiming that only 1,100 papers were brought for an estimated voting population of 2,000. These were the scenes at the University of Technology this morning. Students confronting electoral officers and demanding to know why only 1,100 ballot papers were brought to Unitech. You see, there's 3,524 defense. After heated debate, students proceeded to burn the ballot papers. And this was just one of the many incidents that happened today in Lay, triggered by the shortage of ballot papers and voters frustrated that their names weren't on the list. Earlier at the Chinatown Voting Center, it was a slow start for voters. Many had come as early as 4 a.m. to vote. Police maintained tight security at the Chinatown police station, but many voters were still frustrated. Eng Anuma, who voted in 2012, found this morning that her name was not on the electoral roll. Names of her family members were also missing. Delvin Balson planned to vote in this election. She is one of many young voters who will miss out in the election process. I'm 30 years old now. I no vote. I'm, it's, I, I feel like I'm not belong to this country or something. Minutes after polling began, scrutiny is called for the suspension of polling and asked to know which electoral role would be used. Some voters who found their names on the 2012 rolls 
couldn't find theirs in the 2017 rolls, and while polling resumed, the electoral roll problems remained unresolved for the rest of the day. Scott Wyde, National MTV News, Lay. Three people claiming to be current students of Unitech have been arrested for their role in the burning of ballot papers. The arrest was made about 20 minutes after papers were burnt on campus. Lay Metropolitan Superintendent Anthony Wagambi said police identified the three men and a response unit arrested the trio. They are now locked up at the Lay Central Police cell. Now we're joined by MTV's Lay Bureau Chief Scott Wyde to give us an update on the situation there. Mr. Wyde, a very good evening to you. First of all, to the Unitech uh, situation, the burning of ballot papers, did anybody expect that? Um, Mariba, I think the Lay City was expecting a lot of things this uh, today at, during the polling period. Um, Unitech, uh, quite quite a, a bit extreme, but yes, uh, trouble was expected uh, at the polling sites and police were prepared for it. Um, for, for Unitech, the students and staff expected more ballot papers uh, from the staff and, and students I talked to. They were expecting at least 2,500 to 3,000 uh, ballot papers. Uh, when polling officials arrived, they had only 1,100 ballot papers. So they, the, uh, what what happened was a, a, a long drawn out debate between polling officials and uh, the students and staff, uh, and if it eventually ended up with uh, a group of students burning the 1,100 ballot papers. Um, as as you read earlier, the 20 minutes after what happened, police arrested, identified, and arrested. Uh, three of the what, what they call ringleaders. They've, they've brought, in, brought them into uh, the Lay Central Police Station and they're being held in custody. Um, over it, now I block uh, at about nine o'clock this morning. There was uh, a lot of commotion there as well. Uh, community leaders tried to shut down polling. Polling was suspended eventually um, because of the same thing. They said uh, the ballot papers were not enough. Ballot papers... Um, Population at Nawai Block was about 3,000, 3,500, and the ballot papers were inadequate. Um, at Omili this afternoon, also at about the same time the Unitech incident happened, um, police had to fire shots into the air to disperse a rowdy crowd. Polling was also suspended for about an hour and then resumed in the afternoon. Um, we were over at uh, the Butibam village, and that's where... Uh, the traditional landowners of Lay are, are um, they've also had problems there the whole whole day. Um, the traditional landowners feel underrepresented in in this election because uh, the two wards that represent them have each have about 800, uh, an estimated 800 eligible voters each. Um, the ballot papers that were sent to those uh, ward and polling stations were about 400 each, so that, that's caused a lot of problems. Uh, I have a crew currently waiting at Butibam um, because the people there are threatening to burn ballot papers. Police have uh, advised them to just uh, stand by and wait for the re assistant returning officer to come by and uh, give an explanation as to what should happen next. Now, Scott, all this has happened while the Electoral Commissioner is in lay. He did cast his vote. Have you had any uh, responses from the Electoral Commissioner? The Electoral Commissioner, yes, uh, when he came this morning, he came straight from the airport, was escorted by the uh, Morobe election manager, came into the polling booth at Ward 2, at the Ward 2 Council office. He cast his vote. He was able to find his, his name on the electoral roll. Um, he's... He's, he says he's very confident of delivering a successful election. Um, I've also asked him about uh, voting by children in Magarima, Asaro, and other parts of the Highlands. He's given a broad statement, broad generic statement, saying um, we, the Electoral Commission does not uh, condone actions like that, uh, but that was it. Um, in terms of uh, other issues, he's... he's said he won't resign, he's very confident that this election will be a success. Now in Lay, have there been any international observers taking part in, in, in observing the election uh, polling there? And have you spoken with them? What has been their reaction to the events today? No, I haven't spoken to them, but there was an election team, uh, election observer team at the Ward 2 Council office. They had a 
short chat with uh, the electoral commissioner when he came. Um, they've been uh, very active in, in various polling centers. We, we haven't had time to really follow them. All right. Thank you so much, Scott. Uh, we'll talk to you again for another update from Lay. You're watching National MTV News. We'll go for a break. And when we come back, some sporting action in Trukai Sports. Stay tuned. Trukai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. Papua New Guinean-born Wallabies halfback and one-time captain Will Genia is now back with Australian rugby, but the possibility of joining a club is still shrouded. The world-class number nine was in his final year of his two-year contract with Stade de France when he was released to return to Australia earlier this month. Prior to the release, Will Genia made known his intention to return to the Queensland Reds. And upon presenting his decision to return to Australia, it was initially denied by Study France. Reds, on the other hand, already have three halfbacks in the team, all rostered for this year and 2018 as well. And Genia's re-entry to his old team now faces another major hold-up. I signed with the Australian Rugby Union at quite an awkward time because at the moment, um, all squads are quite uh, stocked up, so particularly with halfbacks. Uh, so it's a case of probably either the Reds or going to the Melbourne Rebels. So I just have to wait and see um, whichever one wants to take me. The rugby star left Queensland Reds in 2015 after eight years of Super Rugby in Brisbane and joined the French giant Stade France. Now still awaiting an offer from clubs in Australia, it didn't stop Genia from taking on his duties with the Wallabies. Though in the match against Scotland, Wallabies' 24-19 loss came as a surprise as Scotland is three places below Australia in world rankings. And Will Genia openly took responsibility. For the world number nine, mistakes like this rarely happen and it was a big letdown for the gold-clad fans. Like a big stage like that, you've, you've got to take responsibility for the things that you don't do well and go back and work on that. And I think from my perspective, I was quite pleased that um, uh, moving into the game against Italy, I worked on those things and I bounced back with a pretty, pretty decent performance, so I was quite happy. And in the last game over the weekend, Italy almost ran them down. Despite scraping off a winning finish, the testing 40-27 win did not come easy. Genia, for one, will not let mistakes that occurred in the meet against Scotland repeat itself. For now, his wait for inclusion in an Australian rugby club continues. Dinero Strico, National MTV Sports. Two Aussie roles and 2014 International Cup defending champions, the new Mosquitoes men's AFL train-on squad is hoping to retain the cup again this year. Putting time and effort into training, players are counting on them to make the final team. Godwin Eki reports. Winning this year's International Cup title is the focus of the Mosquitoes as they train hard prior to the event. While the final team is yet to be announced, every player in the train-on squad will have to attend all training sessions to be able to make it to the final team. A requirement for the selection will be based on attendance, performance availabilities and every player must have all travel documents ready. Final squad for the new Mosquitoes and Flames team will be announced in the next few days. The boys are really, uh, they're really into it. Um, uh, we've got a handful of boys from the 2014 that are really get up to, you know, go back and defend the cup. Um, um, they're heads up for it. Uh, they're putting everything into it, at training, at the club training level as well, and also during the, uh, during the competition games here in Mosby. And uh, they're all looking forward to it. Uh, trying to you know, do the best they can to get into the side. Players for the final team is expected to have a mixture of top players from PNG and Australia. <laughs> Meanwhile, the national women's AFL team, the Flames, who are in training, will make their second appearance this year, while this will be the sixth event for the men's team. Currently, um, as per the, um, uh, the IC rules, uh, the, each country is uh, supposed to send 30 players. And um, we have um, we have 46 men at the moment, and we've got around, I think 35 for the women, and then uh, that will be cut down to 30 next week, and also for the men's as well. 
which uh, we're going to cut them um, um, down shortly. So hopefully by next week, Thursday, Friday, we should be able to come up with the final 30-man um, uh, side and the 30 women side. The next training session for the PNG Mosquitoes will be this Saturday. PNG Mosquitoes are the defending champions and without a doubt a top contender to win back-to-back -back international cup titles. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. Trukai Sports continues after these messages. Don't go away. Trukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. The Port Mosby basketball team is ramping up its preparations for the PNG All-Stars Championship set for this weekend. Lawrence Lahari of the PMBL Association says with some of the best players in the country, there is no reason why the Port Mosby side shouldn't do well. The Port Mosby men's basketball team looked primed as they began their first intensive session in preparation for the All-Stars Championships this weekend. Under the guidance of coach Chris Worry, the side is ramping up its efforts to outperform their opposition. They should be sharp. Um, you know, as, as you said, two months of uh, intense competition. Uh, the PNG Men's Basketball League, uh, the PMBL is something that we strive ourselves of being the elite uh, competition. And, uh, you know, I expect nothing less from our players that are currently uh, in squad training right now. A host of PNG internationals anchor the side. And with the amount of quality in the squads, the PMBL has created two teams with an option for a third. Uh, we, we are talking to our expatriate community that play the Filipinos and uh, Australians and a couple of others that uh, play in our comp to form, you know, uh, the PMBL rest of the world sort of team. Um, so we're hopeful to get just two confirmed. Hopefully there's a third team from PMBL, but, you know, uh, we know Lay's coming in and uh, Alotau and Daru and should be some good competition out there. Amidst election concerns, the championships are regardless set for the weekend, with unconfirmed reports that a total of 12 teams will take part in the competition. The All-Stars concept is an opportunity for players to make a push for the first-of-its-kind Melanesian championship set for September, which will feature New Caledonia, Fiji, Solomon Islands and Papua New Guinea. Jeremy Mogi, National TV Sports. Preparations to kickstart the 2017 Central Premier League is underway before the competition this weekend. The competition is expected to bring together some of the best players in the province. Godwin Eki reports. Central Premier League executives are in talks at the moment planning for this weekend's competition for Hiri and NCDC. David Silovo and Mare Peto says teams have been identified for the event to take place at Laloki High School. With this concept there, we will adopt uh, to use uh, widely to our sportsmen who participate in the Central Premier League. It will surely um, go a long way in uh, identifying um, talent within our competition. Coming on board to sponsor the competition was Wellness Lodge. Graham said investing capital in sports that young people are able to participate in is something he strongly supports. Now coming back to Central League, I fully support. Uh, it's, uh, I think your competition is here in NCD, very good, and it's all the Central Province uh, uh, teams that are going to play in the city. Long-time president of Central Rugby League, John Kedia, says big plans are underway for the province. Many sponsors to the Premier League, especially with the NCDC pool. We have a new pool, NCDC, it's a new concept. The Central Premier League competition will run for three months, followed by district competitions for Abao, Rigo and Karuku. Future plans are also underway for district events and Hiri and NCDC events, where top players will be identified from the three districts. The purpose of the Central Premier League and district events is to identify a squad for the Central Chiefs team that will be bidding to make a team into the Digicel Cup in 2018. A total of 30 teams are expected to participate this weekend. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. To the NRL now and Canterbury Bulldogs prop Sam Cassiano will take a pay cut to link up with Melbourne Storm next season. Cassiano has been squeezed out by the Bulldogs' big-name signings, Kieran Foran and Aaron Woods. 
The Warriors, Dragons and Parramatta were also interested, but Cassiano chose Melbourne on a smaller deal than his Bulldogs contract, where he has a chance to get a regular starting spot. He has signed a three-year deal and will start with a storm next season. And that ends Trukai Sports. Up next, your weather details for Friday. Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. A look at the weather forecast for Friday in the southern region. Thundery showers expected in Port Mosby, Daru and Alata. A few thundery showers in Kerma as well as in Popendeta. To the Mamasa region, thundery showers in Leh and Wau. A few showers in Medang, mostly fine for Wiwek and Vanimo. To the New Guinea Islands region, a shower or two for Lorangau and Kaviang. Thundery showers for Kokopo, Rabaul, Kimbe and Buka. And in the Highlands region, Mount Hagen, Goroka, Kundiawa, Mendi and Wabeg. All these major centres to expect thundery showers with morning fog. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. And there's a new sports and weather for today, Thursday, the 29th of June 2017. On behalf of the MTV News team, present viewing, stay tuned for Your Vote 2017 with Neville Troy and Titi Gabi up next.